Greetings, I'm Dr. Robert. And on this edition of Five-ish Minutes with Dr. Robert, the subject is Kundalini. Please note, number one, that Kundalini is a concept that arose specifically in the context of certain tantras, certain manuals of practices for the purpose of achieving particular ends. It is not necessary in any way if you are attempting to align yourself with the Supreme Reality and develop a healthy relationship therewith. It is not necessary in any way that you must have your Kundalini awakened for that purpose. The reason why Kundalini is now so popular is because it, after all, is something that is very exciting and encourages you to think that if a lot of exciting things are happening to your body that perhaps you don't know uh, uh, the origin of, that it is possible that, that this is a manifestation of Kundalini. Um, it is very important, even if there is some reason for you to be thinking about Kundalini, it is very important not to put any effort into trying to get it to awaken any faster than it is ready to awaken in your particular context. At the moment, I am in rural New Hampshire. There was a large snowstorm a few days ago. There's still snow drifted around here and there that snow is going to melt in its own time and it will be gone. If you try to melt the snow earlier, you may succeed only in exhausting yourself or in whatever, depending on what technique you were using, possibly damaging something while you were trying to melt it. It will melt automatically. If you're interested in moving in the right direction, which is in the direction of the Supreme Reality, then automatically your organism, according to what, how it has been engineered for what you need to do and how you need to evolve in this particular lifetime, your organism will move in that direction. As long as you keep pointed in that direction, that's the direction in which you will move. The challenge with Kundalini is that it has another name and the only difference between these two names is the direction in which the energy and attention is flowing. The other name of Kundalini is Ahankara. Aham in Sanskrit means I. Kara means the thing that creates. Ahankara is the I creating faculty in the organism, the thing that identifies, this is my body, this is my shirt, I am living in this house which happens to be the place where I am at the moment. Everything that identifies yourself with your small, limited personality is something that you are able to identify with because of this energy of identification. And when it is focused in the narrowing, limited, individualized direction, we call it ahankara. When it's instead, it starts to focus in the general large macrocosmic supreme reality direction, we call it Kundalini. And this is why that we are better off not talking about someone's Kundalini being awakened, because if your Kundalini is completely awakened, it will identify with the supreme reality, it will no longer identify with your body, and you are finished, gone for good. You have left this plane and you are somewhere else. That will be the end of your terrestrial existence for this lifetime. So anyone who is able to stay alive and awaken Kundalini to some degree has only awakened it to some degree but there has, because there has to be some method of preserving sufficient of the ahankara, the eye creating process, in order to keep you in your organism. So please, Salute Kundalini, she is the supreme goddess of your innards, the thing that is creating both you and opening to you the possibility for becoming something more than who you are right now. But don't try to tell her what to do. Instead, allow her to develop in the way in which she wants to develop, work with her, 
and it is much more likely that you will have a successful result. This is Dr. Robert thanking you and wishing you a very pleasant experience of reality. Thank <laughs> you.